The main problem that most people have with climate change is not really a discussion about the climate, but it's a discussion about the economics and the reshaping of our societies, something that influences all of us. And most people feel as if they're not part of that conversation at all. Now, what I noticed, and probably many of you have, is that within the last five years, most of our politicians, when passing legislations, they're not even talking about how they're going to improve the economy. They're not even talking how they're going to make your life better. Instead, all they talk about is how to make your life worse. It seems that this concept of climate change is affecting most political decisions, at least the most important ones. And again, the, the average person seems to be completely cut off from the conversation. So instead of the politicians discussing how your life is going to be better and how they're going to be making the country better for your children, in fact, even the concept of your children might be quite problematic, uh, they're talking about how in the future you should eat less meat, um, how you should uh, have difficulty traveling with a personal car, how you should consider traveling less, and all of this is happening while you're looking at our leaders uh, flying private jets, uh, traveling in private yachts, uh, being surrounded by security that are driving SUVs, and, and they're going to these meetings where they talk about the climate. And even their representatives, uh, which in some cases happen to be children, like Greta Thunberg, they do not get to have any debates. They do not get to be pressed on any of their ideas. Most of the common sections where they partake in have disabilities and uh, they never actually get challenged in, in, in any situation by anyone, right? Um, now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, if, if there is like a debate that Greta Thunberg had with, with another person of her age even, uh, where, where she discusses about climate change or, or even, again, like the, the, the important conversation is not about climate change, but it's about the uh, economic and, and political solutions that are being found in order to combat climate change. Because uh, I personally don't know of a single instance where that took place. So obviously people are a little bit upset, right? And if you look at many European countries, they seem to have decided that 2030 is the year where it's going to be zero carbon emissions. Uh, again, the idea is that your life is going to take a turn for the worst. You're going to have to give up your air conditioning. You're going to have to make a lot of sacrifices. Uh, you're going to have to pay more taxes for the environmentalism. Uh, and, and this is happening at 2030. And all these nations agree, even though like their populace, most of them don't even know about the, the proposed changes and the proposed policies, right? Uh, so, so this is why it's a little bit weird. It's because it's coming top down. Uh, as I mentioned several times, it negatively impact your life. And there is no end to it. Like they're not saying, um, you know, like when it's an economic crisis or when it's something that uh, we need to tighten the belt a little bit. But but it's going to be fine in the future, right? So we're tightening the belt now so that 10 years from now on uh, things are going to look better. No, they're, they're not saying that. They're, they're basically saying that from 2030, your life is going to be shit. And it's going to continue to be shit, not just for you, but for your kids as well. Uh, and, and hopefully the solutions that we have, which is sustainable energy, is actually going to be sustainable because politicians have never made wrong choices throughout the history of humanity. Or if they had done, uh, now it's different because uh, now we have access to better technology and smarter people. So um, with, with that out of the way, you, you can understand why certain countries like Russia or China were resistant uh, to making these changes. Uh, and it's also interesting that uh, especially China and Russia weren't uh, often criticized by Greta Thunberg. Uh, China never, as I know, maybe she criticized Russia recently since the war in Ukraine. Uh, but, but I guess like many people were surprised when they read this from Disclosed TV saying that uh, Putin now approves climate doctrine uh, for Russia per decree, uh, aiming for carbon neutrality no later than uh, 2060. Right, so... A lot of people were like, well, what is going on here? Because uh, Russia is a major exporter of oil. Uh, Russia is also a major exporter of gas. So why are they sabotaging their own economy? Like, why are they doing any of this? 
Now, the answer to this is simple. Uh, people just don't follow the news. And uh, it, it's not necessarily the people's fault. It's also the fact that the mainstream media doesn't talk about the important news. I mean, this probably wasn't reported on CNN or MSNBC. Or, or if it was, it was like, a, by the way, this happened and then they moved on. Uh, but it was since 2nd November 2021 that Russia adopted the long-term climate strategy. And uh, I assume, because it, it's difficult to get news from Russia right now, uh, unless you actually speak Russian and you get it from sources on other social medias, but uh, I, I assume that uh, once they adopted this, it, it took a while until Putin had to sign it. Uh, maybe they made some ratifications or something, but like... This was done before the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, so the invasion of Ukraine won't happen until February the next year. And this is 2nd November 2021. So this is why uh, they they probably went along with this. Uh, take into account that their strategy is by 2060. So basically all the countries of the world are doing it by 2030. So now Russia can just say, well... We're looking at you guys and we're noticing uh, the, the economic damage and the, the economic catastrophe that you're doing to your own people. Uh, we chose to not do that to our own people, so we're withdrawing from the program. Like, like they can do that. Uh, another potential is that by 2060, you know, uh, most people that are alive now in power, especially the elderly, uh, may not be in power anymore. So it's going to be the burden of the next generation to carry this kartoffel. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't expect that Russia is actually thinking that they're going to become uh, climate neutral by 2060. Uh, still, it's, it's a really good thing for a leader to have as a beating stick, right? Like, um, take into account that Russia believed it's going to uh, conquer Ukraine in a couple of weeks. So now you, if you have this whole thing with the climate strategy, you, you can punish entire regions. Like if a region is becoming a little bit problematic, you can be, oh, well, you need to pay uh, bigger taxes because of uh, the climate change. Oh, you need to uh, dismantle your industry because climate change, right? Like a, a, bi a nation the size of Russia can actually use the idea that they're fighting climate change in order to punish and to target specific regions and ethnicities within their borders. I'm pretty sure that China does the same. So this may be one of the reasons that they signed it. And again, like the other reason is that by 2060, who's going to give a fuck? Like, uh, there, there's so much, so many things that can happen by then. Uh, most people will tell you, especially people that do marketing for various corporations, they will tell you that it, it is possible to predict things within one or two years. Like, like this is very possible. It is difficult to predict things up to five years. This is why many people were laughing the five-year plan that the Soviet Union and China used to have, right? Um, but, but it is impossible to predict what will happen after five years. And, and when you apply it to 30 years, I mean, uh, dude, there'd be dragons, like a friend of mine used to say. Um, which is absolutely true. So, uh, yeah, I mean, th this is no biggie. This, this is not something that's uh, supposed to impress anyone. Uh, unless you live in Europe, because now the activists can claim, well, even Russia is on board. So you have to do it. You have to do it because even Russia and China and, and India and all the other countries are on board. Uh, so, you know, and of course, Russia, if, if uh, they, they want to pressure some of their rivals, uh, they, they like, for example, if they want to pressure Germany, if Germany wants to back away from uh, its uh, climate change initiative, Russia can be like, well, what are you doing there? What are you doing there? Because like, we're, we're on this initiative as well. Like, well, you, you don't you don't think that climate change is real? Like, well, blah, 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 blah. so uh, again, it's a diplomatic tool. Pretty much. It's, it's an instrument that uh, nations can have to be part of the conversation while not actually planning to make any changes. I, I would personally be shocked if Russia just decides to destroy its entire economy. Uh, unless they happen to be sitting on a new form of energy that humanity has yet to discover yet. Uh, and, and they seem to have a massive supply of that everyone will want. Then yeah, sure. But either than that, though. Let me know what you guys think, and as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.